Welcome to today's online service. My name is Jim and I'm the rector at St Matthew's Church here in Warsaw and I'm going to be leading today's service. Today is of course Remembrance Sunday but we can't have our normal Remembrance Sunday service. However we're starting a new short three-week sermon series on reflections on a difficult year and a little later in the service Jim Rennie will be speaking about lament and our liturgy today will also pick up on the theme of remembrance. Then following this service on YouTube at 11 o'clock there will be a short act of remembrance at which you are also welcome to join us. A special welcome to anyone who is a visitor today. It's great to have you with us. If you want to know more about St Matthews, probably the easiest way is to search for us on the internet or through social media. I just have a couple of short notices to mention. Firstly, I want to mention resources for worship and for teaching. Children's activity sheets and service sheets for today's service are on the resources page of our website, our Facebook page or in the email sent out in advance. But alongside the children's activities we've also identified some suitable age appropriate videos for children which link with the themes each week. These are available free for you to use through our Right Now Media subscription. If you'd like access to them or any other content on Right Now Media please do contact me and we can add you to the list of subscribers. There are thousands of videos on a whole range of topics from a Christian perspective available for all ages. Secondly I need to mention lockdown services and the support we're providing. Now obviously now we are back in a national lockdown we aren't able to have services in church at the moment. We're not sure when these restrictions will be lifted so we'll be continuing with our online services as normal. However the church is open for private prayer on Wednesdays from 10 to midday. And we also have our pastoral team available to help. So if you need support for anything, please do contact our online pastoral team who will be able to connect you with the right person to support you. I want to mention Advent and Christmas now. Christmas is not cancelled, despite what some people may be thinking and saying. And we will be celebrating seasonal services as usual. At the moment we are planning for online Advent Christmas services and also services for Advent and Christmas in church. More details will be advertised on our church website and through social media as we get closer to the Christmas season. As we begin our service of worship let's start with a prayer and you might like to join in with the words in darker type. We meet in the presence of God, who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain and heals our wounds. Amen. Even in the midst of a time of great challenge, we know we can bring our concerns and needs to God. God loves us and he's with us as we go through difficult times. And that is reason enough to praise and worship God. So can I invite you to join with me in singing our opening hymn of praise. You might like to stand for this.
Over the next couple of weeks, we are going to learn about Moses. We are going to read the Bible, pray together and do an activity at home. This week we are learning about lament. When we feel sad, worried, lonely or angry, it's always good to tell someone about how we feel. This is called lamenting. Many years later, after Jacob and Joseph and his brothers had died, a new pharaoh ruled Egypt. He was cruel. He made Joseph's family build great temples. Joseph's family were called Israelites. Pharaoh thought there were too many Israelites, so he ordered his soldiers, go and kill all their baby boys. But one woman hid her baby in a basket. She floated the basket in the river. Pharaoh's daughter, the princess of Egypt, saw the baby in the basket. She loved him. So she took the Israelite baby back to her palace. She named him Moses. In this Bible story, the Pharaoh treated people in a very unkind way, making them work hard for no money. The people were very sad. They prayed to God and asked for his help. So, God saves Moses when he was just a baby. And when Moses grows up, he goes on to do some very important things. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll find out more. This week we have learnt about how baby Moses was safely carried down the river in a basket. For this week's activity, you could act out this story by putting a baby or another toy wrapped up safely and put in a basket or box. You could use a washing basket or a cardboard box. Be creative and send it down the river like Moses' mum did. Time to pray. Thank you, Lord, for today. Quieten my mind as I pray. Help me to listen to what you say and to follow you every day. Teach me when and what to say to those I meet in my day. Help me to know what is true and to help others find you. Lord, we pray for those that are sad. We ask for help to show our sadness in the right way and not get too angry. Help us to comfort those that are sad so that they don't feel sad alone. We pray that when we feel sad, we can use those feelings to do good things in the end. Amen. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like But I've heard tender whispers of love in the dead of night And you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never
It's who you are. It's who you are. We're coming now to a time where we say sorry to God. None of us are perfect. We all say and do things that are wrong. We all fail to say and do things that we should say and do. Not only does it affect other people when this happens, it goes against God's desire for us. So we need to say sorry. But repentance isn't just about saying sorry to God. It's about turning to go in a different direction and seeking to do better in the future. We need to recognise our part in these things. That's not just about individual things we have done that are wrong, but also about the part we play in the collective, things we do with other people, even nations that are wrong. So now we're going to say sorry for those things in our words of confession. If you feel able, please join in with me in saying the words in darker print. Human sin disfigures the whole creation which groans with eager longing for God's redemption. We confess our sin in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. Diane is now going to lead us in our intercessions as we continue in an attitude of prayer. Today is Remembrance Sunday and we're using the image of a poppy to help us in our prayers. If you have a poppy for Remembrance Day and can have it with you now, use that or look at the image of the poppy on your screen. There will be moments of silence in the prayers so you can pray in your own words. Look at your poppy in your hand or on the screen. Poppies are bright and cheerful flowers. Give thanks to God for the lives of those who have died in war, remembering all the joy they brought to families and friends and all the good things they did for their homes and for their country. Then look at the red petals. Red reminds us of danger and harm. Ask God to be close to those who are still facing danger each day, to give courage to the armed forces and compassion to all who help others. If you are holding a poppy, place your whole hand over the poppy. Poppies are also fragile and need to be handled gently. God cares for those who are hurting and those who are sad. Ask God to comfort all who are grieving the loss of someone they love. Finally, place a finger on the centre of the poppy. Ask God to help you play your part in working for peace in the world. And as we pray for peace in the world, we remember and pray for refugees and families from war-torn countries who are living in destroyed homes, in makeshift tents and shelters, and have little access to medical care clean water or enough food and like us are trying to cope with the coronavirus pandemic. Love compels us to stand together in prayer with our neighbours near and far. Amen. A prayer now to discern God's vision for St Matthew's. Father God, who set the world in motion, you inspired our predecessors to build St Matthew's Church as a symbol of Christian faith on the skyline of Warsaw. 
You guided them to teach, serve and proclaim your kingdom of love in words and actions to the people of this town. As we seek to discern your direction for us for the next stage of our journey, may your Holy Spirit guide those in leadership at this church. Open our hearts to your call on our lives, both as individuals and as a church. Help us to see the world through your eyes and proclaim your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for this Sunday. God, our refuge and strength, bring near the day when war shall cease and poverty and pain shall end that earth may know the peace of heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let's say the Lord's Prayer together. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Savior now to one.
I have a thought that you might want to ponder. If at the end of all this difficult time someone asks you the question, what did you do during lockdown? How will you answer? We could choose to do nothing and sit and mope, but we can also do other things that are more positive and proactive. It's a choice. And there are many ways we can continue to serve God, even in these times of restricted freedoms. It could be a simple thing like writing a letter of encouragement to a person, or picking up the phone to check someone is all right. We're limited only by our own imagination. So we can give back to God through serving him, in loving God and loving others. But we can also give financially, and that's important too. If you would like to give financially to St Matthew's, some details are coming up on the screen. Or you might like to spend the next 30 seconds or so thinking about how you are going to give to God this coming week. Welcome back. Let's say thank you to God for his many gifts to us and ask him to help us to use them wisely. Father God, we thank you for your many gifts and blessings to us. Even in this time of lockdown, help us to notice and acknowledge your blessings. And Father, we ask you to take these gifts that we offer to you. Use them for your work for your mission, for your glory, here in Warsaw and in the wider world. In Jesus' name, Amen. We're now going to have our Bible readings and then Jim will speak to us. The reading is Psalm 13. O oh Lord, how long will you forget me, forever? How long will you look the other way? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? Turn and answer me, O Lord my God. Restore the light to my eyes or I will die. Don't let my enemies gloat, saying, We have defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall. But I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he has been so good to me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Bible reading is taken from John chapter 11 verses 1 to 45. Now a man named Lazarus was ill. He was from Bethany the village of Mary and her sister Martha. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is ill. When he heard this, Jesus said, this illness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was two more days, and then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. After he said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. 
Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello and welcome to this talk for Remembrance Sunday and also the start of a short series of sermons where we will be reflecting on a difficult year. This talk is focused on the topic of lament. I thought it was appropriate that this talk be given here in the St Clement's Chapel at St Matthew's Warsaw that was laid out in the 1920s as a memorial to those who lost their lives in World War I. It is important to look back on large-scale events, especially tragic events, to remember, to grow and to learn. This is why we meet at memorials and cenotaphs on Remembrance Sunday and on Armistice Day to remember those who have given their lives in conflict and also to pray that the need for such large-scale tragedies 
will never come again. This year has been a tough year for a lot of us. With feelings of grief and loss and lament. A lament is a song, poem or piece of prose that the author uses to express their sense of loss or grief. Many examples of these throughout history have been with regards to the loss of life or the loss of freedom, the loss of a city to a siege, the loss of a people to an exile. Within the Bible there are many laments found, especially in the Psalms and also in the book of Lamentations. But with biblical laments, towards the end there is a cry for help from God or a cry of praise to God giving the situation into God's hands and his care, trusting in his power that he will work through whatever situation the writer found themselves in. This year, many of us have suffered loss or grief, whether that is the loss of the life of a loved one, a friend, a family member, or a neighbour. And it has been difficult to find appropriate time to grieve these losses. We have also sometimes felt loss of freedom, being locked down, being restricted in where we can go, who we can meet. And of course, this takes a toll on our emotions and on our minds. And what I'd like to say, the main point of this talk, is that it's okay. It's okay to grieve, it's okay to have a feeling of loss. However, it's for a time and it should pass. In the example of the psalm we heard read today, Psalm 13, the psalmist cries out, feeling lost and forgotten, abandoned by God. And maybe we've been feeling that this year. However, even in this short psalm of lament, we can see that the writer turns to praise God thanking him for the good things he can see, even if everything else seems dark. Where the writer says, I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. This should be an example of how we grieve and how we feel loss. Acknowledging it, but trusting that God has everything in control. In the gospel reading today, we heard of the death of Lazarus, a friend of Jesus's. And Jesus' response to Lazarus's sisters is not one of dismissal, but one of comfort. He reassures them. He gives them hope. But we also read that he wept. He too grieved. Through both the examples of Jesus' grief and also the lament of the psalmist we can see that there is a way forward. And that is what we must focus on. Lament, grief and loss are important 
phases in a process of coming to terms with terrible things happening. And yet, it is not the destination. It is not the end point. I would encourage you, if you have felt grief and loss during this year, through all the trials, through all the lockdowns and restrictions, that you express this through prayer to God. If it helps, write it as a poem, as prose, as just a way of getting your feelings out by writing them on paper. Or talk to someone. Reach out to friends, family, or the pastoral team here at St Matthew's. But do not dwell too long in grief. Know that this is a step along a journey. But we have not lost sight of the destination. In the coming weeks, as we continue this series, we will be looking more at this journey and the destination. Perseverance to get through troubling times. Hope. Hope of a bright future. A future that we have promised by our Saviour, Jesus. A hope that grows in us through the work of the Holy Spirit. And so as I draw my talk to a close, I would like to offer this prayer. Heavenly Father, comfort us as we grieve. Be with us as we lament. Be near us in our times of feeling lost. Keep our hearts and minds fixed on you and the knowledge that we will get through these times and we have a secure hope for the future. Amen. Thanks, Jim. I'd like to invite you now to join in with me, affirming our faith in God. Remembering that God is a source of all life and all life is precious to him. And knowing that Jesus calls us to love our neighbour as ourselves. So let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We now sing our final song.
We're coming now towards the end of our service. Thank you for joining us. At 11 o'clock there will be a short 10 minute act of remembrance for Remembrance Sunday on our YouTube channel. You're welcome to join us for that if you would like. After that there will be our usual coffee and chat on Zoom. Details are in the chat below and are in the emails that we've already sent out. That will start at about 11.15 and last for about 30 minutes. If you'd like to join us for morning prayer or if you have any questions, please do get in contact with me or our curate Joe or get in contact with our online team. And of course you can also connect with us through our church website or through social media. So as we come to the end of the service, shall we say this prayer together before I pray a final prayer of blessing? God of our pilgrimage, may your kingdom come with deliverance for the needy, with peace for the righteous, with overflowing blessings for all nations, with glory, honour and praise for Christ, the only Saviour. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Take care. God bless. See you next week. Thank you.